Hello, welcome to Regime Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 46 of SQL Server. In this session, we'll learn about instead of update trigger. Before continuing with this session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 43, 44 and 45 of this video series. So in SQL Server, there are three types of triggers, DML, DDL and Log On. DML triggers are fired automatically in response to DML events. Examples of DML events include insert, update and delete. DML triggers can be further classified into two types, after triggers and instead of triggers. After triggers are fired after the triggering action, whereas instead of triggers are fired instead of the triggering action. Now, we have spoken about instead of insert trigger in the previous session. In this session, we'll learn about instead of update trigger. Let's understand that with an example. We have two tables here, TBL department table and TBL employee table. Now this view is based on these two tables. So if you look at this view, the ID, name and gender columns are coming from TBL employee table and the department name column is coming from TBL department table. So obviously this view is based on multiple base tables. In the previous session we have seen that, you know, if a view is based on multiple tables and if you try to insert a row into the view, it doesn't allow you to do that and it throws an error stating the view, you know, is not updatable because the modification affects multiple base tables. Okay, and we have overcome that by creating an instead of insert trigger. Now let's try to update this view. Instead of inserting a row into this view, let's try to update this view in such a way that the update is going to affect multiple tables. So if you look at the update statement we have here, so we are updating the view and we are changing the name column and the department name column. So obviously name is coming from TBL employee and department name is coming from TBL department tables. So now this update statement is affecting multiple base tables. Okay, because of which when we execute this update statement, we get an error stating view of function view employee details is not updatable because the modification affects multiple base tables. Let's look at that in action. So we have these two tables, TBL employee and TBL department. Let's create a view on them. So create view, view name as, select the required columns, ID name, gender department name from TBL employee, joining that with TBL department, you know, on the department ID column, which is common between TBL employee and TBL department. We have learned about views, uh, you know, and joins in the previous sessions. So please check those sessions if you are new to views and join. So let's create this view. So command complete successfully, refresh the views folder and we should see our view there. Okay, now just to make sure we have the data as expected in the view, select star from view should return us the data back, which is fine. All right, now let's try to issue that update statement. So if you look at this update statement, we are updating this view. We are changing the name column and department name column where ID is equal to one. So for the first record, we are changing the name from John to Johnny and department name from HR to IT. But then if you look at this, this update statement is affecting two base tables, TBL employee and TBL department. So we should get an error. Viewer function view employee details is not updatable because the modification affects multiple base tables. Okay, so this is expected. Now, to overcome this, we can actually create an instead of update trigger because this is an update statement. So on this view, we can create an instead of update trigger and, and it works. But then before we do that, let's look at another example. So we have exactly the same two tables, TBL department and TBL employee and the same view. Now, the only difference here is the update statement. So if you look at the update statement here, we are updating the view and we are only changing one column that is department name column and we know that department name column is coming from TBL department so this update statement is affecting only one base table it's not affecting multiple base tables so it should succeed okay but then when you actually execute the statement it updates the department name in TBL department table so here you're saying update the department name to IT where ID is equal to one. So you are asking change the, set the department name to IT 
where ID is equal to 1. So now John, department name is currently HR. So now it's going to change this HR to IT. Okay, and that will be done in TBL department table. So as a result of that update, what's going to happen? John, you know, number 3, this HR will become IT as shown here. So number 3, John is number 3, so that will be shown as IT. But look at this, Ben is also number 3. He will also be shown as if he belongs to IT department. Now when we issued this update statement, what's our intention? Our intention is basically to change John's department ID from 3 to 1 because 1 is IT department. We don't want to actually change the labels here. If you change the labels here, whoever has the department ID of 3, everybody will be shown as IT department and that's wrong. And we want to avoid situations like this. So if you update a view that is based on multiple tables, there are two things that can happen. If your update statement affects multiple base tables, then an error will be thrown and the statement will be terminated. But whereas, if your update works, I mean, if your update only affects one table, you know, if you just update the name and gender, it may work correctly. But if you update the department name, then it may incorrectly update. You know, the update might happen, you know, in a wrong way. And to overcome that, we can make use of instead of update triggers. So let's now see how to create an instead of update trigger to correct the situation. Okay, so let's try to execute this query and see if it actually, um, you know, wrongly updates. So when we select the data now, it's showing correctly John belongs to HR, Ben also belongs to HR department. Now let's execute this update statement. So we are updating employee details. We are asking to change the department name to IT for record with ID is equal to 1, meaning change John's department name to IT. When we execute that query, press F5, one row affected, which means the update succeeded. But then when we actually select the data back from the view, look at that. John belongs to IT, Ben also belongs to IT, which is wrong. And we didn't expect this to happen. And if we investigate the reasons why it happened so, look at this. In the department table, the label is changed from HR to IT. Ben's department is IT, I mean number three, so it shows Ben also as IT. In fact, we should have actually changed the department ID of John from three to one, okay? Which we can achieve using an instead of trigger. Now, before we write the trigger, let's change this label back to HR so that we have correct data to work with. So update TBL department said department name is equal to HR, where department ID is three. So let's execute this query and let's select the data from the tables just to make sure it's as expected. So everything is correct now, IT payroll, HR admin. Okay, cool. Now let's go ahead and create that view. Now this view, if you look at it, it's very big, but then it's very simple to understand. It's just that a bit of copy pasted code, if you understand one section, is pretty much similar. Okay, so we know that triggers makes use of two special tables called inserted and deleted and we have spoken about them, uh, you know, in the previous three videos parts. Okay, so inserted table contains the new data that you have inserted, whereas deleted table will contain the rows that you have deleted. But whereas when you update a view or a table, inserted table will contain the updated new data, whereas deleted table will contain the old data before updation. All right, so we'll make, of, make use of those tables. So obviously, when somebody issues a statement like this, you know, update TBL department set name is equal to HR, where department ID is equal to three, then we have this inserted table and updated table, uh, inserted and deleted table, which will have the old and new values. We should be, you know, taking the new values and updating either, you know, the TBL employee table in the correct way. Okay, so, and to do that, we are making use of this trigger. So we are creating a trigger, create trigger, trigger name on this view, 
instead of update. So this trigger gets fired instead of the actual update statement. Okay. So what we are doing here is in I mean there is a function called update function. So when somebody issues this update statement, so when somebody says okay update TBL department set department name, then you know update of ID now this update statement is actually updating department name column not ID column so this function will return false and we wouldn't get into this block but whereas if you check if you check it I mean if you look at this condition it's actually checking update department name so it gets into this block okay so basically you can use this update function to determine if the user ha is actually updating that column so if you look at the view the view has got ID name, gender, and department name columns. So we have to check if each column has been changed. And to do that, you can actually make use of this update function. So this function checks if the column has been changed by the update statement. So whatever is there in this next to set the column list, you know, that for those columns, the update function will return true. So you need to check, okay, if ID column has been updated, the employee ID is updated, then we want to throw an error because you cannot change a primary key. So we are using raise error function. So we have spoken briefly about raise error function in the previous session. You know, if you want to throw a custom error, then you can make use of raise error function. So we are throwing an, an error message saying ID cannot be changed. And this is severity level and state. We'll talk about raise error and exception handling in a great detail in a later session when we talk about exception handling. So when, we, when, when somebody is trying to change ID, we want to raise this error and return from here. We don't want to process anymore. Okay, that's why we use the return keyword. Okay, and this is the end for this begin. Next, we are checking if department name has changed. So if department name has changed, so if somebody is issuing a query like this, okay, department name has changed, I mean, up set the department name to HR, meaning we are intending to change the department name, okay? So if the department name is changed, then our intention is basically to update the department ID column not to change the department name column in TBL department table. So to do that, obviously, you will have to get the department ID that is associated with this department name. And to do that, you can actually join the newly entered department name with TBL department table. And where will the newly, you know, this updated department name will be present? It will be present in the inserted table. So you will have to join the department, I mean, the inserted table with TBL department table and then get the department ID column from TBL department table. So that's what we are essentially doing here. So we have this variable department ID which stores the department ID from TBL department join with inserted table and obviously here you will join on the department name column because you're setting here to a new department, okay? So for the HR department, it looks up in TL, TBL department table, whatever is the ID, it returns that into this variable. And then you need to check, okay, is, is there a department ID? If department ID is null, then it means the user has typed in some garbage. So obviously, if I type in a garbage like this, Obviously, there is no entry, there is no department with that name, so I don't get any department ID back. So this will be null. If that is null, then we want to throw an error saying that invalid department name and then return back. You don't want to process any more. Okay, otherwise, if you get the valid department ID back, then what you do, you update the TBL employee table, set department ID is equal to add department ID, Obviously, you'll have to join that with inserted table because in the inserted table, you have the employee ID. So you want to be updating that correct employee. That's it. So if department name is changed, that's how you update that. On the other hand, if they are changing the gender, it's going to be straightforward. All you have to do is join inserted table with TBL employee and use the gender column in inserted table 
to set that as the value for the gender column in TBL employees table, which is again very straightforward. And along the same lines for the name, use the name column from the inserted table, join TBL employee with inserted on the ID column. That's it. So if you look at this, it's actually pretty simple. There are only two things to keep in mind. You know, if the user tries to update the ID column, we want to throw an error. If they try to update the department name, then you'll have to get the department ID from TBL department table by joining the inserted table with TBL department table. And obviously, there are chances within the update statement users can type in a department name that doesn't exist in TBL department table. If that's the case, you have to throw an error saying that invalid department name. And to do that, you will have to check if department ID is null. It will be null only when the department name doesn't match what the user has specified. Okay. Other than that, it's pretty simple. You're, you, I mean, you need to understand joins to understand this update statement. This update statement involves joins. Okay. So let's create this trigger on this table. Press F5, command completed successfully. Now let's try to update this and see what happens. Okay, so first I'm trying to pass in a garbage department. So what should happen? It should throw an error back. Um, so we created this trigger. It's actually saying one row affected, which is wrong. Let's investigate why is this happening. Did we create this? Oh, okay. We are actually updating the TBL department table. We should actually be updating the view. So let's select the TBL department. So that's a wrong statement that we have executed. So three, we want that to be HR. So let's change it back. Okay, so now let's try to update the view. So we are trying to set the department name to IT for record with ID is equal to one in the view. And if you look at the data in the view, one is John. So for John, we are trying to change his department ID from HR to IT. So let's try to do that. And before we actually change it to IT, let's type in some garbage there. So this department, a department with this department name doesn't exist in TBL department table. So we should be getting an error. So let's press F5. Look at this invalid department name. But on the other hand, if you supply the right department, so we want to change it to IT, I press F5, one row affected. So when you select the data from the view, look at this, only John's department is changed to IT, but Ben is still in the HR department. And to check if it has updated correctly, if it has changed the department ID column value, select the data from TBL employee and department table, look at that. John's department ID has been changed from 3 to 1 correctly as expected. All right. Now let's try to change more than one column. Okay. Um, so here I'm trying to, let's select the data from the view. So let's try to change name, department name, and let's also try to change his gender. Okay, so we have this query here. So we are trying to update this view, change the name from John to Johnny, gender from male to female, and department name from IT to let's say payroll. Okay, let's update this and see if this query. Before we implemented instead of update trigger, we used to get an error stating that the view is not updatable because the modification affects multiple base tables. But now, look at that. It it succeeds. Now let's try to select the data from the view and see if it has succeeded. John to Johnny, gender from male to female, and department name to payroll. And if you look at the underlying data, the data, you know, the base tables are correctly updated. So department ID for Johnny is two. Two is nothing but payroll. Okay. So instead of triggers can help, you know, to update views correctly if it's based on multiple tables. But then keep in mind, we are using update function here. This update function 
you know this will return true if a column is specified in the set clause okay now irrespective I mean even if you set the update to the same value I mean let's say for example let's look at this with an example so if you look at this the name you know for record with ID is equal to one is Johnny and his gender is female the records gender is female so now let's say we are cha changing Johnny's name or let's say I am changing yeah let's change name to Johnny so it's exactly the same thing I'm setting the name to Johnny which means you're literally not changing anything but then when you update this query you're actually trying to change the name here but it's but it's the same value but in your trigger this function update of name will actually returns true even if you're not I mean you're not actually changing to a different value changing it to the same value but still the update function will return true okay just to prove that because we we will not have any data modified let's say print name changed let's alter this function okay press F5 command completed successfully so if we try to execute this it will print that message name changed which means the update function will return true even if you set the column to the same value okay so that's um, that's why I personally prefer using uh, comparing the values manually from between inserted and deleted tables rather than using this update function okay but again this query doesn't really make sense you know nobody will will issue a query like this so it's up to you whether you want to use the update function or if you want to manually compare the column values between inserted and deleted tables on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day